Let's see. Up next, we have Dev Dynasty. <clears throat> Hitting the unmute button is important. All right. Well, we're going to start here from the logout screen. Um, I'm going to log in. I'm going to kind of explain what our, uh, what our, actually, I'll start with the about page. So <clears throat> the, the goal of this application was to track equipment for a rental company that rents out equipment. Um, the idea behind the app is that it's a single site. So one company has this application um, in, either installed locally or they just have access to this version of it. And it would be tailored to them. So anybody that logs in just sees their equipment for their company. Um, there aren't multiple levels. No, there's no managers that may be like a stretch goal later. Um, certain people can do certain things. As of right now, if you log in, you have access to everything. Um, additionally, you can create an account, um, login page. I'm going to get the Google warning for having a bad password. Or I'm just going to type in the password wrong. There it goes. All right, so when you log in, this is your dashboard. So this is effectively the summary of the equipment that is assigned the job sites and the contracts. Um, you have your map here, um, the different contracts. Now, all these charts were handmade except for the line chart. Um, Peace made all of these by hand with the exception of the line chart. She ran out of time. She used chart.js for that. Um, but if you go up here to this, it will select the different equipment versions and it will display the graphs based on what you've selected. Um, now, this map is always the job site map. That's just kind of how it ended up coming out. Um, I will get to the map more later. Um, the, as you see across the button, the top here, you've got the downloads. Um, if you download this, it pulls it up, opens it up here. So you can see what the data looks like. So it comes out as a commerce separated value. So you can pull your equipment out, your data out, and there's one for each table that we've built so far. Um, it's not the greatest format, but it does the job, so. The, as you notice, once you log in, your side navigation bar appears, your logout button switches to, or login button switches to log out. Um, and move to the equipment piece. Did you have anything else? No. Did I miss anything? That's good. Ah. So this is your equipment list. Obviously, you've got your different um, equipment types. You can switch between the types once again, so you can see your specific equipment. Um, as you go, this download file is the same thing. It'll pull the data out. Um, list or Purdue. The search function, it's pretty quick. Now, I am running this locally right now. We uh, we are partially deployed. We're having some issues, but it's a work in progress. So contracts. This is where the map starts coming to play. So your contracts, you have your list, you have your job site, uh, the contract dates, they scroll. Uh, this is the general consensus of how we built each um, each page that displays the map, um, map has full functionality. I'll get to it a little bit more here in a second, but job sites. So you have your different job sites, um, your map functionality. It, it is Google maps and I'll get to the lessons learned on Google in a moment. Um, as you scroll in it's based on ID right now, it's just more of a proof of concept as opposed to the actual naming, probably use something a little bit more that makes a little bit more sense. But if you were to, it will actually give you the location, show you the map. Um, back up there. There are methods to center on the, the pins to where Google Maps will auto center around where all your pins are. Um, played with it a little bit, but because we're all working on separate databases, I just chose to go a static look at the whole states initially. Um, that would probably be something that would tailor a little closer to the company and their location and how they run equipment. Um, you get full Google map uh, functionality. Um, it's 
once it started working, it, it worked well. Uh, every time. Gets me every time. Warehouses, same thing. Now, the difference with the warehouse list is it assigns, uh, it, it will tell you everything that's on. This is a storage location. So it shows you what all is stored there and where it belongs if it's not rented out. Um, and then on to the creating of new equipment. So the forms are all relatively the same. We did use Tailwind. We didn't use Bootstrap. So while it looks very similar, I mean, it took us a while to figure this stuff out. Um, with your new equipment, you have built drop downs, so you can select your storage site. So there's no errors there. Um, when you're creating new equipment, uh, similar as to uh, job site for job site, the in order to keep fake addresses will still populate with Google. Um, I had one that literally said Fakeville, and it populated in Africa. No name. So, in order to help, hopefully rectify that a little bit, um, added in. Should pop up right about there. Yep. So. Google address validation. It's actually not using the, like my original thought was that this was going to use the address validation API. It actually still uses the geocoding API that the pins use. Um, and I'll get to that a little bit more towards the end when I explain where I messed up. Um, learn from me, please. Um, where the job site? So warehouse, similar concept and difference with the uh, contract is you can select each piece of equipment, a little bit of data validation to prevent you from trying to create something that doesn't exist as far as equipment assigned to a contract. I'm going to go back to the map. So these pins are generated based on the address. We did not add a location in our table to save the lat long coordinates that are generated by the address. So every time a map loads, each one of these pins is pinging the Google Maps API and regenerating each time. Still relatively quick. However, in the last 12 hours, I have, oh, I still got it set to 14 days, don't I? Oh, really? Every time. Uh, just in the last 12 hours, I've pinged Google Geocoding API 800 times. Um, so if I were to do it differently, we would have the Latin long blocks built in to the table. When the API pings it, pulls those locations, it would save it, and it would only hit the API if the Latin long blocks were empty. And that would just prevent the sheer number of requests going to Google. Um, and then, and it does that with every map generated. So it's, it's, it's a learning experience. We learned that's, that was the story with that piece, Nelly, Vivian, did I miss anything? No, it was all good. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, there was some, uh, let's see, what about, um, did we talk about, availability maybe is the uh, only thing i don't remember where that was at um i don't either contracts maybe or where was it no where's our availability feature it's an equipment click an equipment mm. i don't click on um one of the models yeah go into the detail oh, page thank the you detail page i forgot all about this page yeah, I didn't there know we that. go <laughs> sorry about that so this is your standard, so it gives you a, a, a picture, the the job name, that where it's at, and then currently unavailable because it is rented out, um, and then the dates. So, yeah, I forgot all about this page. I forgot you could click that button. Uh, sorry. Yeah, the that was actually kind of a um, yeah. crazy process a little bit. We had to work and rework our logic a bit, but basically it defaults to check availability on today's date and then when you go to input um whatever dates you want to search availability for um it'll then update the ca the card um and it'll show available if it's available within that date range i 
Anything else, guys? Vivian, peace. My goal was fast. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. Oh, it looks like I'm losing internet, too. That's not good. No, presentation was great. I know it came in only, I think it only came out once. So awesome job, y'all. All right. Uh, remember us. Oh, Sato, can you start sharing?